In this video, I'm going to show you an example of solving a differential equation with the power series method. The differential equation is x minus 3y prime plus 2y equal 0. The first step in solving a differential equation with power series is that we suppose the solution of the differential equation to be equal to a general power series in the form of sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n. And from this we have to find y prime. Because here in this differential equation we have y prime, we have to take the derivative of the power series. The derivative of this power series is sigma n a n x to the n minus 1. We have to take the derivative of the general term of this power series derivative of a n x to the n is n a n x to the n minus 1. Simply we bring the power down and we subtract the power by 1. But note that when we take derivative from y, instead of starting n from 0, we have to start n from 1 to infinity. The reason that we have to start here in y from n from 1 is that the first term of this power series is a constant. If we plug in 0 for n, the first term is a0 x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, so this is a0. a0 is a constant, and derivative of any constant is 0. So in derivative in y prime, we don't have any term corresponding to a0, because derivative of a0 is 0. So instead of starting from 0, we have to start n from 1 in y prime. Keep this in your head that in y prime you have to start n from 1 to infinity. And in y double prime you have to start n from 2 to infinity. Now let's plug in y prime and y in the given differential equation. If we plug in y prime, we have x minus 3 times sigma n from 1 to infinity n a n x to the n minus 1 plus 2 sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n equal 0. Now if we plug in this bracket in the general term of the power series we have sigma n from 1 to infinity if we, plug, if we multiply x by x to the n minus 1, the power of x here is 1. If we add 1 to the n minus 1, the power becomes n. So if we will multiply x, we have n a n x to the n minus. If we multiply 3, we have sigma n from 1 to infinity. 3 a 3 n a n x to the n minus 1. And finally we have sigma n from 0 to infinity. A n x to the n. Don't forget to multiply these two. So 2 a n x to the n equals 0. Now if you look carefully at these power series, you can see that. The power of x here and here is n, but the power of x here is n minus 1. And because we want to factor x to the n, we have to make the power of x here also equal n. But how we can change n minus 1 to n? Here we have to replace n in this general term with n plus 1. So in this general term, we replace every n, not only this n, every n with n plus 1. But because here we are adding one unit to n, we replace n with n plus 1. So we add one unit to n. We have to do the inverse of this operation with the starting point of the sigma. Because we add one unit to n, what is the opposite of adding? We subtract one unit from the starting point. So we replace in this sigma n with n plus 1 
but at the same time we subtract one from the starting point because we want to cancel the effect of this operation because we do not want to change anything we want to have the same sigma but in a form that the power of x be the same as the other power series but why replacing n with n plus 1 help us note that if we replace this n with n plus 1 n plus 1 minus this 1 becomes n and so then we have x to the n in the power series what we are doing here is shifting the index of a sigma and if you are not familiar with these type of operations in power series watch my video about shifting the index of summation or shifting the index of sigma let's continue so here in these power series we replace every n with n plus one also note that in these power series n starts from one but without changing anything without affecting this sigma we can start n from zero there's no difference between this sigma and this why note that if here in this new one if we plug in 0 for n the first term if we plug in 0 we have 0 a 0 x to the 0 but because here we have 0 all of this is 0 so by changing 1 to 0 we didn't change anything in this power series and why I like to start in from 0 because if you note that here also in a start from zero and in the middle one because we subtract one from the starting point in this sigma also and it starts from zero that's the reason that i want to have in this power series and it starts from zero so again i have to mention because starting n from zero will not change anything in this power series it's completely fine to change n from 1 to n from 0. Now in the middle power series, we replace every n with n plus 1. So we have 3 times n plus 1, a sub n plus 1, x to the power of n plus 1 minus 1. But n plus 1 minus 1 is n, so x to the n. And n starts from 0 to infinity. And let's write the last power series without changing anything in that. Now, as you can see, in all these power series, x we have x to the n, so we can factor x to the n. And in all of them, n starts from zero. So everything is ready for us. So we put only one sigma here we factor x to the n from the first power series we have n a n from the middle one we have minus 3 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 1 and in the middle in the last one we have 2 a n equal 0 because the right side of this equation is always zero we have to equate the coefficient of x to the n this expression is coefficient of x to the n equal to zero and by doing this we can find a recurrence relation for a n's and from that we can find a n's so again because the right side of this equation is always zero we have to set this bracket also equal zero By setting this bracket equal zero, we get to this relation n a n minus three times n plus one a n plus one plus two a n equal zero. If we move this term, which has n a n plus one, to the other side of the equation, and if we factor a n from these two terms, 
then we have 3 times n plus 1 a n plus 1 equals n plus 2 a n. If we factor a n from these and these, from the first one n remains and from the second one n plus 2. Now here, if we divide both sides by this, a n plus 1 equals n plus 2 over 3 times n plus 1 a n. We get to this recurrence relation. Now we can use this recurrence relation for finding a n's. Because in this equation, in this sigma, n starts from 0, let's plug in 0 as the first value for n. If we plug in 0 in this relation, 0 plus 1 here is 1, so a1 equals, if we plug in 0 for n here, 0 plus 2 is 2, so we have 2 over 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, so we have 2 over 3 a 0. Now if we plug in 1 for n in this relation, 1 plus 1 here is 2, so a 2 equals 1 plus 2 here is 3, so we have 3 top. And in bottom we have 3 times 1 plus 2 is 6 or 3 times 2. Let me write this this form. Then we simplify that. A1. But note that A1 itself is 2 over 3A0 from this relation. A1 is 2 over 3A0. And here we want to replace this A1 with this. Which if we do so, we have 3 over, this is 6 or 3 times 2. Let me keep this for now 3 times 2. And if we replace this a1 with 2 over 3a0, these two here and these two cancels. What remains is so a2 equals 3 over 3 to the 2 a0. Maybe you wonder why I am not simplifying this 3 by this 2. Because in a moment you will see that I am looking to find a pattern for a2, a3, a4 based on a0. If I simplify these three with these three, it's hard, it will be harder to find that pattern. So, for now, keep this in this form and please do not simplify these three with these three. It's better to keep these three in top and the bottom. Now let's see what happens if we plug in two for n in the relation. If we plug in two here in this relation, we have a3 equals 2 plus 2 in numerator is 4, so 4 over 3 times, if we plug in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 times 3, a2. Now again, let's plus, substitute this a2 with this expression that we get here. So we have 4 over 3 times 3 times by 3 over 3 to the 2 a 0. We can simplify 1 3 from the top with 1 3 from the bottom. If, for example, we simplify this 3 with this 3. In denominator, we have 3 to the 3. And in numerator, we have 4. So, a 3 is 4 over 3 to the 3 a 0. a 1 is 2 over 3 a 0. a 3 is 3 over 3 to the 2 a 0. 
a3 is 4 over 3 to the theory a0. Can you guess and can you see the pattern? Numerator first we have 2, then we have 3, then we have 4, probably after this we have 5, 6, 7 and so on. And in denominator first we have 3 to the 1, then we have 3 to the 2 and then we have 3 to the 3. So probably you can guess that a n in general is n plus 1 in numerator. Why n plus 1? Because when we have 1 here, here is 2, one more. When we have 2 here, we have 3 in numerator, one more. When we have 3 here, we have 4 here, one more. So when we have n here, we have to have n plus 1 here in numerator. And in denominators, we have 3, 2, the power of n. For example, here we have 3 to the 3, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 1. So in general, we have 3 to the n times a0. Now that we could find a n in terms of a0, if we replace this in the power series, we can write the general solution. The solution in the power series form. So we get to this relation y equals sigma n from 0 to infinity. Instead of a n, we replace it with this. So we have n plus 1 over 3 to the n a0. But because a0 is just a constant, and it doesn't depend to this n. We can bring it and put it here. It's probably better to put a0 here. But if you like, you can leave it here. Times by x to the n. And this is the solution of this differential equation with the power series method. If you want to learn more about solving differential equations with the power series method, you can watch my other videos in this regard.